This episode of The History Guy is brought to you by Angry Birds Friends. On August 18, 1961, the Santa Cruz, California Sentinel reported a startling event. Residents, especially in the Pleasure Point and Capitola area, were awakened at 3 a.m. today by the rain of birds slamming into their homes. The shocking event in which at least eight people were bitten by angry birds befuddled even bird experts at the time, and its true cause wasn't identified for some 30 years. The 1961 Sooty Shearwater attack on Capitola, California, that possibly inspired a famous movie, deserves to be remembered. Speaking of angry birds ramming into structures, and seriously, how often does that topic come up in conversation? I recently rediscovered the Angry Birds game again, and I am just as hooked as I was when it came out back in the day. I'd like to thank the sponsor of this video, Angry Birds Friends. You know, like pretty much everybody, I have been playing versions of Angry Birds for years, and I've been playing Angry Birds Friends, and it's just like the original game, where you slingshot the birds to break the structures, and you pop the pigs to clear the levels, and, and gosh, once you start on a level, it's hard to give up until it's done, and then you just want to go on to the next one. The twist in this game is that levels are bundled in tournaments, which have all sorts of fun themes, and there's new tournaments literally three times a week, so you never run out of levels to play. And then you get to compete against others in your league, so you want to try and get three stars in every level to make it to the top of the rankings. Also, as they partnered with Amazon Prime Gaming, you can claim Amazon Prime Rewards in the game. New high score! The game is free to download on Android and iOS. It's playable on PC, on the Windows Store, and Facebook games. And you can actually support the History Guy by downloading Angry Birds Friends using the link in the description. Give it a go! At first, the event in August 1961 was startling. The Stockton, California Evening and Sunday Record wrote that Friday, August 18th, will be remembered by residents of this small Monterey Bay community as the day that the black seabirds descended on the town. The San Francisco Examiner reported that mass thousands of big, black, and bewildered seabirds smashed into buildings and other obstructions. The Oakland Tribune wrote that residents called city and county switchboards an alarm when the birds smashed into their homes, littering lawns. The Santa Cruz Sentinel reported, startled by the invasion, residents rushed out on their lawns with flashlights and then rushed back inside as the birds flew towards the light. Mrs. Ethel Gudgel of 2941 Pleasure Point Drive was awakened by what she described as birds raining on her roof. When teenager Richard Von Megas rushed outside, he was struck by one of the birds. The San Francisco Examiner reported that the youth was sent sprawling when the bird made a crash landing on his ear. The Sentinel reported that Gibson Walters of Pleasure Point Drive had a near miss, ducking before the bird struck. The Sentinel continued that a sheriff's car in the area was struck by several birds. The examiner writes that the sheriff's deputy briefly directed the car's spotlight into the sky, and the squad car promptly was rammed by several birds. Capitola patrolman Ed Cunningham told the United Press that I couldn't get out of the car to investigate. They fell so fast that they could have knocked me down and out. The record reported that there were so many birds that police declared them a traffic hazard. And the Tribune reported, drivers reported they were road menaces with their swooping and zigzagging as if they were drunk. The Sentinel breathlessly reported that television aerial supports were severed and a power line shorted out. United Press reported that those that didn't collide with buildings, power poles, and lines rammed into each other in the air. The Examiner wrote that 4,000 or more were killed outright or injured as they sailed into brick walls, power poles, TV antennas, auto windshields, and skylights. The Sentinel reported that when Mrs. A.C. Stadmiller tried to open her door, several birds tried to enter the house. The website Santa Cruz Waves reported the owner of the Venetian Court Motel at the time, Edna Messini, who was bitten during the frenzy, said she heard the seabirds crying like babies and that they slammed against buildings, regurgitated fish, and knocked themselves out. The Sentinel reported that the birds disgorged bits of fish and fish skeletons over the streets and lawns and housetops, leaving an overpowering fishy stench. Mrs. Stadler was quoted, The smell is terrible. The birds threw up fish all over the lawn. The event was more than strange. For witnesses, it was terrifying. Popular Science Magazine wrote in 2020, Edna Massini, proprietor of the Venetian Court Motel on the beach at Capitola in 1961, wrote about the day the birds came. Struggling to the door, I was awed at the sight of hundreds of birds, all with the cry of a baby. 
They were heavy with sardines, unable to fly and lost in the dense fog as they came in from the sea, attracted by our lights. They slammed against the building, regurgitating fish blood and knocking themselves out. Our manager phoned me, asked what to do. She knew it was the end of the world. Panic set in, sure that it was germ warfare. The San Francisco Examiner explains that the victims were sooty shearwaters, a kind of petrol that spends most of its life at sea. It looks like a thoroughly dirty seagull to the casual eye, except for its brief mating season in Tasmania and South America. It spends its time offshore, circumnavigating the Pacific. Encyclopedia Britannica notes that the sooty shearwater can be up to 19 and a half inches long with a 30-inch wingspan. And they come in huge numbers, with the sentinel quoting state park ranger Niles Bergman that they sometimes travel in flocks by the millions. The Oakland Tribune reported that after almost five hours, the invasion course was reversed and the hooked beaked birds flew out to sea. Estimates of the influx varied, high into the thousands. The migration started around 2.40 a.m. By 7 a.m., officers plagued by calls and litter happily reported that the invaders were headed back to sea. But a mess was left behind. The Sentinel reported that when the light of day made the area visible, residents found the streets covered with birds. It was a pitiful sight, especially watching the live birds struggling for flight or trying to hide themselves. The Sentinel reporter wrote that, driving through the streets early this morning, I could see little groups of shearwaters huddled under parked cars, on front porches and alleys behind the homes. Many were crushed on the street by autos. Residents attempted to help the birds. The Sentinel reports that youngsters and grown-ups alike were gathering the live birds in boxes and taking them back to the sea. Once thrown into the water, they suddenly became lively and many skimmed over the water into flight. On land, they seemed helpless. But the confused birds could be dangerous. The Sentinel reported that at least eight people were bitten trying to help the birds. Three of them Capitola street workmen who had been ordered to clear the birds before the police could reopen the roads. The Spokane Spokesman Review reported that persons pecked when they tried to pick up apparently dazed birds were given tetanus shots. And many of the birds didn't make it back. The examiner writes that others succumbed to a garrison of cats that arrived as if by magic, and to some sanitation crews which impartially clubbed everything with wings found on the streets and threw the bodies into mop-up trucks. Although the Hanford, California Sentinel reported that birds that still lived were carried to the ocean by sanitation crews. On August 20th, the examiner wrote that Santa Cruz and nearby coastal communities were cleaning up, or more correctly, scraping up, after the invasion of more than 4,000 bewildered birds, noting that carcasses of sooty shearwaters were being carted away by the truckload. The Sentinel reported the same day that the sooty shearwaters are gone, most of them anyway. Two truckloads were gathered up and destroyed by the county road department. Most surviving birds flew away after being placed back in the bay, and a few remained on the beach yesterday. But the examiner ominously concluded, The reason for the invasion remained a matter of mystery, but promoted one official to remark, The birds, and we, are very much at sea. As the residents of the area tried to recover, officials tried to find an explanation for the birds. Odd behavior. The Sentinel reported that the birds had been seen feeding on a school of anchovies off the Rio del Mar area, and that witnesses had claimed that the invasion started there. The Spokane Spokesman Review reported that they apparently were feeding on anchovies or squid during their migration from the South Pacific to Northern Pacific areas. Suddenly taking off in the water, the birds veered towards the shore. This led to a theory that they might have simply overeaten. The Santa Rosa Press Democrat wrote that bewildered birds of Capitola, who landed by the thousands during the night Friday in the small seaside resort, got that way from overeating. Anyway, that's the latest theory. The sooty shearwater birds seemed to have swallowed too much squid and no longer could remain airborne. Those who survived crash landing, straight cats, and the sanitation personnel just sat and digested until their wings could carry the load. The Spokesman Review wrote that Professor Cadet Hand of the University of California's Department of Zoology said the sooty shearwater sometimes gorge themselves on squid and sometimes die from overeating. But the examiner reported a different theory by another University of California zoologist, Dr. Ward Russell, that the birds were hunting for daylight. He checked the evidence after the living bombardment ceased at dawn. Dr. Russell said that the shearwater, if disturbed while feeding, will rise and head for the nearest light, in this case, the Santa Cruz area. But other experts asserted that the birds' behavior indicated illness. The Oakland Tribune quoted Santa Cruz County Health Officer Dr. Gilbert Donahue, who said that the birds were definitely sick. The Tribune writes that Dr. Donahue speculated that the birds had eaten fungus-infected sardines. But theories abounded. The Redland California Daily Facts reported that explanations for the strange phenomenon were almost as numerous as the birds. 
The examiner wrote that among other explanations scientists sniffed at were theories that the birds got dizzy from eating too many anchovies or that they were suffering from some mysterious disease. Just because the latter probability was mentioned, however, County Health Officer Dr. G. L. Dunahoo scheduled specimen autopsies and a virus check. The Oakland Tribune reported on the 19th that tests were being done at the University of California at Berkeley on a half dozen sooty shearwaters, survivors of a rain of poisoned seabirds that created chaos in Santa Cruz yesterday. The Tribune writes that investigators will first check for insect or mussel poisoning, believing that these are the two outstanding suspects in the bird's affliction. In addition, the Tribune reported that the state game and fish department announced that it was making a separate investigation of the incident. The Tribune said public health department spokesmen said that they hope to have definite findings by early next week. On the 23rd, the Tribune followed up, writing that the state public health department at Berkeley conducted preliminary investigations on the birds and determined that whatever was wrong with the birds was not transmissible to humans. But the paper gives no definitive answers to what happened, noting that the state game and fish department was continuing the investigation with results expected within the next few days. But the answers simply didn't come. In 1995, 34 years later, the Santa Cruz Sentinel wrote, everyone had a theory about the birds' strange behavior, but at the time, they couldn't find a cause. But 30 years later, in 1991, Monterey Bay saw another event. The Sentinel wrote in 1995, seabirds turned up dead on Monterey Bay shores. Dying brown pelicans and cormorants showed signs of dementia, floundering, swimming in crazy circles. Popular Science Magazine explains there was no hail of birds, like the incident in 1961. They simply washed ashore, but the pelicans exhibited similar symptoms. This time, scientists determined the cause. Demoic acid poisoning. What is demoic acid? The Santa Cruz Museum of Natural History explains. Demoic acid is a neurotoxin produced by diatoms in the Pseudonychia genus. When these single-celled photosynthetic organisms occur in high numbers, the toxin can build up in the fish and shellfish that eat them. While it doesn't appear to harm them, as it accumulates up the food chain to birds and mammals, it can cause lethargy, dizziness, disorientation, seizures, and death. In humans, those symptoms can include irreversible short-term memory loss. Lori Moakin, executive director of Native Animal Rescue, was quoted in the Sentinel. It was absolutely horrendous. We lost about 246 pelicans to this, and it's an endangered species. While the pelicans did not attack Capitola, the Sentinel notes that some similarities between the 1961 and 1991 events are chilling. The website of KQED Public Radio writes, UC Santa Cruz marine biologist David Garrison studied the 1991 incident and speculated several years later that demoic acid might have been responsible for the 1961 bird invasion. It wasn't until 2012, more than a half century after the episode, that researchers from UC San Diego's Scripps Institution of Oceanography found direct evidence that the sooty shearwaters had indeed suffered demoic acid poisoning. The institution used samples from an archive kept by California Cooperative Ocean Fisheries Investigations, a marine monitoring program in operation since 1949. Those samples provide evidence that the toxin-producing diatoms were present in 1961. The report concludes, This brief study therefore supports the contention that demoic acid caused the Seaberg frenzy in 1961 and strongly suggests that demoic acid-producing phytoplankton have been an agent of marine animal mortality in the California current system for at least the past 50 years. And if all of this reminds you of a certain movie that was released in 1963, when the event occurred in 1961, the Sentinel reported that the Sentinel received a phone call from mystery thriller producer Alfred Hitchcock, asking that the Sentinel send a copy of their story to him. But alas, the movie The Birds was not inspired by the Capitola event. In fact, the movie was based on a 1957 short story and was already in production when the sooty shearwaters appeared. But Hitchcock did work the event into the movie to add authenticity. The Sentinel wrote, Despite its obvious publicity benefits for this new picture, Hitchcock denied having anything to do with the feathery invasion of Capitola. Merely a coincidence, he purred. 
In 1995, the Santa Cruz Sentinel noted that all commercial seafood from the West Coast is regularly monitored for domoic acid and that prevents risk to the public. In fact, uh, the presence of the neurotoxin caused the state of California to shut down a commercial crab fishery in 2015. But the neurotoxin can work its way into the food supply and can poison humans. In 1987, around 100 Canadians became ill after they ate Prince Edward Island mussels that were apparently tainted with domoic acid. And the algae that produces the neurotoxin continues to have outbreaks affecting seabirds and sea lions and occasionally humans. And that means that the birds might attack again in the future. I hope you enjoyed this episode of The History Guy. Check out our community on thehistoryguyguild.locals.com, our webpage at thehistoryguy.com, and our merchandise at teespring.com, or book a special message from The History Guy on Cameo. And if you'd like more episodes on Forgotten History, all you have to do is subscribe.